Hi everyone, I'm Hayden Turner and welcome back to Taronga TV. Now over my shoulder here we've got some amazing keepers and animals to meet and we'll get to that in a few seconds. But following recent announcements and in line with advice from New South Wales Health, we've had to make the difficult decision to close the doors again on Taronga Zoo, Sydney. That doesn't mean you're going to be seeing any less of us. We're going to be coming right into your living room, right onto your tablet, your personal device, whatever you watch us or however you watch us on Taronga TV, we're going to be getting more content to you. Keeper talks, behind the scenes, special live streams, you name it and so much more. What we're going to do now is go and meet two really, really fantastic animals and their amazing keepers. Come and have a look at this. So how incredible is this, folks? We're meeting not only our beautiful camels, but their keepers. This is Lucy over here and Ian here. Hi. Who have we got here to introduce to our Taronga TV viewers? This is Storm Hayden. She's, uh, she's 20 years old. Uh, she came to us from Dubbo uh, quite recently, along with her, her mate over there, Raz, who's 17 years old. They are absolutely beautiful. So, so beautiful, folks. You might have seen camels in the past in either picture books or you might have seen documentaries on them, but there's a lot of adaptations that camels have, isn't there, Ian? Yeah, absolutely. They're, they come from a very uh, well, uh, arid and, and dry and pretty harsh uh, um, habitat, and usually deserts where the, uh, the temperature can reach up to like 50 degrees in the summer, but then in the, in the very uh, low uh, minuses in the winter. So they've got to have a lot of uh, features to be able to deal with that. Uh, some of those are different things. Uh, they've got uh, two sets of uh, eyelashes, uh, three sets of eyelids. So the, the sand, they can get the sand doesn't give them any trouble. Also, their nostrils can fully fully close. You can see that right there, can't Just, you? Uh, yeah, on, uh, on Stormy's nose there. Also, uh, they've got sort of built-in knee pads uh, on that, just down here on their on yeah. their knees and also on their uh, on their chest plate on the sternum there. So when they're lying down on the really uh, hot sand, it doesn't. Uh, make it uncomfortable and they can they can stay down and rest without getting burnt pretty much. Because those temperatures in the desert get extreme, don't they? Like oh, absolutely. Over 50 degrees uh, in the heat and, and minus in the evenings. Yeah. And, and this beautiful, beautiful coat as well. This yeah. is their winter coat? Yeah, this is their winter coat. So uh, our girls, they usually go and start their molt at the start of summer, sort of around early December. And uh, by late December, early January, they've, they've totally lost this uh, lost this uh, this coat and now they've got their really thick winter coat which is uh, keeping them uh, keeping them very warm in these uh, these cold months but uh, we're actually going to do a uh, one of our brushing se uh, sessions with them Hayden which is uh, purely like a bonding session yeah. you know they, they, they enjoy being brushed so we're just going to lie her down now and, uh, and and start that up so soft too folks that that beautiful that camel hair uh, is utilized by different cultures to make uh, clothes and different things and it's so, so soft. Good girl, Stormy. Now we do these, as I was saying, this session, it's mainly just for, for you know, for bonding. So, you know, when we have to do things with them, they're, they're, they're a lot more comfortable with us uh, being able to, uh, to be close. And also when the vets, so if we need to do any vet checks, they're, they're very happy with, uh, with anyone coming and have a look yeah. at them. Uh, but also with the brushing helps when they do molt because in the wild they would uh, usually brush up against trees or roll around on the ground yep. to, to, to get rid of their coat but we give them a, a bit of a helping hand and make it a lot easier for them here. It's got to feel good hasn't it that's for sure. They are really really beautiful. I love camels folks if you can't get a little bit of a, an indication. I've worked with camels uh, a long time and Ian and Lucy and I have a bit of camel love between us. Uh, they certainly are super beautiful creatures, highly intelligent too, Ian. Yeah, oh, very, very smart, very smart, these guys. And they, they're able to, uh, to go for very long periods without, um, in the wild without, without food and water. Yeah, baby, it's okay. Uh, they do that through okay. uh, mainly because of the, which everyone knows camels pretty much for their, for their hump. So the, the, the camel with one hump is a dromedary camel, so also known as an Arabian camel. Yep. And then there's the Bactrian camel, which is, has the two, two humps. Uh, but the dromedary camel makes up about 90% of the, the world's camel population, so it's the most common one. Uh, we also have a, an actual population out in, uh, in the outback in Australia, which is a bit of a, a feral population. Um, so a lot of people would have you know, seen these in our, uh, in our own backyard as well. Now, there's a, 
A common misconception, and parents watching, you'll be able to share this with your kids, and kids watching, you might think that that mass there, I can hear you say that you might think it's full of water, hey Ian? No, yeah, it's actually full of fat. So it's a, it's a camel's uh, fat store. So when the, when the camel's born, they don't actually, they don't have a hump. Yep. So it's when they, they start eating solid food, then they're able to, uh, then their hump starts to grow. Uh, so they, uh, it's a big fat store. So they're able to uh, go in the wild when the, when the food is scarce, they'll, they'll go and use that, that, their hump, use their, uh, their uh, fat store and uh, be able to survive for weeks without food and, and out without water as well. That's right. So there's a lot of people think that when the camel drinks, this fills up with water. It's not actually true. It's a big fat storage. I'm sucking my tummy in there as I'm telling that little story. Um, it's a big fat storage for them to survive, just as Ian said, for long periods where they don't eat or they don't drink. Sometimes you do see it flopping a little bit over when they're really dehydrated. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but look, that's really beautiful and solid. These two animals are in such beautiful condition and care from our keepers here at Taronga. And there's something very, very special about being just in this chilled zone with these incredible creatures. I've had the privilege of spending some time in the wild with, um, or in, in, in Morocco actually, with Berber camel trainers and um, the way their relationship that they have with their camels is quite extraordinary. Uh, I, I, I was out with them for about three weeks in the desert and the, they'd be lying down like this and an old Berber nomad, uh, Ian Lucy, would be asleep down here like this next to their camel like this at night, like this in the desert, sleeping up next to their camel really nice and staying warm from the big body mass of the camel. It's such a beautiful thing. I think Stormy, she'd love that. She likes yeah. a cuddle and a, and a pat. And... Oh, they are the most beautiful, beautiful creatures. So there's a couple of fantastic facts. Meeting Lucy and Ian and these two beautiful camels. Camels in our care at Taronga, another amazing species here at Taronga Zoo. And we're going to be bringing you a lot more stories on Taronga TV through the next two weeks. We can't wait to talk to you again. You never know what's around the next corner. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Lucy. Thanks, Ian. Cheers, Aiden. Thanks. Thank you, Raz and Storm. Uh...